sponsored by Squarespace. Let's cut to the chase. World of Warcraft is a lot. I mean, in real time, it's asking you to track a dozen or so, like cooldowns, buffs, resources for your own character. Then you've got to watch your own feet for AoEs and everything that every enemy is doing, and then everything those same enemies will be doing soon. And if that overwhelms you, that's totally okay. Today we're going to fix that through making a damn good UI. By the end of this video, you'll be able to walk away with our import strings, our settings, our recommended add-ons, and all those things. But don't worry, this is not just going to be a complicated series of super advanced add-ons, no. This is the fastest way for you to get an easy-to-use, super effective setup, one that actually looks and feels like World of Warcraft. So, let's make your setup great. Doubly so with today's sponsor. Who is Squarespace? Now they are the online site builder with killer templates, tools, and features to get your web presence started right. Seriously, they do so much. And if you go to squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming or just click the link down below, well, you can start your free trial and then you can use the code Bellular Gaming for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, I first used them to make our job site. Since then, though, they've released so many features. And my favorite, especially for those a bit newer to design, is Blueprint. Blueprint's awesome because with it, you basically choose from professionally curated layouts and styling options, and you essentially build your own site template from the ground up. It's tailored to you, and of course, it'll work across every single device, and it helps you avoid common pitfalls for non-designers. As an example, Blueprint helps you use cohesive fonts and colors, and they make tweaking all of that stuff in your site super easy. They've got dozens of modern and intuitive options for how to display your content, and even automatically pull in stuff from your social media accounts. And they're always building supporting features. As an example, if you want a bio site for your social media to complement your full site, you can do that. And recently, they've uh, actually got a whole new template aimed at designers that's complete with a proposal document to help you land gigs, which is kind of the point because beyond the website, they have other things to help you support your goals online. Now, that's just a taste of what Squarespace do. So you can go to squarespace.com forward slash value gamer or just click the link down below. You can start a free trial. You can actually go make your site, have a bunch of fun, play with their tools. And when you're ready to send that live, Use code Bellular Gaming for 10% off your first purchase of a site or domain. First, what is UI? The whole point of your UI is to show you stuff in a way that helps you make decisions quickly, so we'll focus on that. As an example, the best key bindings are the ones close to WASD because that's where your fingers naturally are. So let's imagine that, but our screen. Your default is going to be looking at your character, and that means the further away from your character, the further away the information is. So if you need something to make a decision, put it closer, but without covering up too much of the world. So let's fix this problem by making a screen space tier list. Right below your character's feet is close to your eye, but it doesn't cover anything up because of the camera angle, and that means it is S tier space, our most useful. A tier space then would be around the sides of your character. Now this can end up covering up the game world and making things feel claustrophobic if it's done wrong, but it is really close and it can be useful. B tier space then is the stuff that's just below the S tier space towards the bottom of the screen. It's not going to cover things up and ruin your gameplay, but you will have to move your eyes down and away from the action to see what's there. And the same goes for near the top of the screen. Basically, C tier space is anything on the outside, like say chat, and F tier space is anything that obscures your character or where your enemies usually are. And rather than obsess about laying everything out perfectly, what you should instead do is avoid laying things out badly because it's the overcrowding that will make it hard for your brain to find what it's looking for. Imagine the dashboard of a car. They look the way they do for a reason, right? Distinct shapes in different locations, lights that only come on when they're relevant, a focus on dialogue instead of text and numbers, all because every second you're looking away, you risk your increase of crashing. The stakes aren't that high in World of Warcraft, but let's take the same principle. The single most important thing while playing for most of us is deciding what we're going to press next. So generally, you need to know five things. The most obvious is your cooldowns. Being able to see what actual abilities are available is uh, sort of important in a game like WoW. The second thing, and the most obvious, is your health and your class resources. There's no point hammering Chaos Bolt if you've got no soul shards or you die before the damn thing goes off. The third and fourth are buffs and debuffs, where of course you'll need to see dots in your enemies and your maintenance buffs on yourself. Of course, that's defensives if you're a tank. And the fifth and final thing is your enemy status. Because it would suck to perfectly execute your single target rotation while you're looking at your UI, only to look up and see that you're surrounded by mobs and you're dead. And of course, then, if you're a healer, well, you need to look at the health bars. So that's the five things we need to see. Let's talk about how. 
The good news is we can get our first four categories in one shot, and unsurprisingly, that shot is a good week Auras pack. They're basically everything you may need to make a decision put into one area. Health, resources, cooldowns, buffs, debuffs, the whole lot, complete with effects like glows and flashes to draw your attention to the important things that are coming up. Basically, no matter what spec you play, Luxlos's class week Auras are a fantastic set to get. Now, of course, you can try others for your spec, but his are just a perfect starting place. They're linked down below. Basically, just install the week Auras add-on, and then you grab the import string from Luxthos's site. So now we know how we're displaying your info, it's time to talk about where, and it's obvious. Basically, if you're using these weak ores, put them in the S tier space. Just remember, of course, to keep your character's actual feet clear so you know what you're standing in. And the good news is that our weak or a friend of UI that you can find down below leaves this area open with some bars below in the B tier space, which basically are just there for some quick referencing while you're still learning your spec. But of course, you may not want to use weak ores, so let's talk about that. This is certainly a different approach. The first thing you'll have to do is to track your abilities with your action bars. And then for your resources like energy or holy power, you got two different options. One, you can use the unit frame or you can use the personal resource display. Now, I think for many people, the personal resource display will actually win out for two reasons. Number one is positioning, and that's because it's right below your character, so you'll always have an eye on it. And reason two is our next item, buffs. Basically, in the game, you need to track your buffs, but only some of them. And we're usually so swimming in procs and things that if you just look at all of your buffs, it kind of drowns out anything that's useful. And the good news is the personal resource display after Blizzard of Attitude over the years now shows you almost everything you need to make the big decisions, but without any of the fluff. So between that and the spell alert system, you can basically get 90% of the way there. That only leaves debuffs, but I'll cover them in a little later. So that's weak ores and our weak ores alternative sorted out, basically your personal resource display with action bars. Now your personal resource display is always in that S tier space under your character. So next, let's move over to our bars. Now with the default UI's edit mode, you can basically just move things about freely. Just make sure that all of your main combat abilities are on one or two bars and that those are as close to S tier space as is possible. That way then you've got one place for your cooldowns, your buffs, and your resources. Then you can throw some bars into the B tier or C tier space just for things that you might need to glance at but that aren't really that important. It's definitely better to do things that way than just having your whole screen just crowded in icons to the point where you can't really intuit where things are. And of course if you want this all done for you just pick up our no weak or is UI as the starting point for this. Basically I think the default options are fine for these, but if you want some more advanced control, you can get tons of add-ons like Bartender or Dominoes. And then a quick pro tip, we've also got our key binding guide. And seriously, if you think UI is impactful, man, key bindings are almost more impactful and they can make the game feel so much more fun. So after you've got your UI good with this video, hit up the key binding one and get that right too. Nameplates then. So debuffs and enemy status are the thing we got to deal with and nameplates will do them. Now you can't decide where these go, so instead just make sure this entire space in your screen is free from anything. Thing. Now, as for customization, the default nameplates are basically fine, but I'd highly recommend you use Plater instead. And that's because the informational advantage is just far too strong. You got things like colored cast bars, special marks for health ranges, custom debuff tracking, and way more things. But of course, I know so many people hate it when you download add-ons and suddenly WoW doesn't look like WoW anymore. So we have made a profile for Plater that looks as close as possible to WoW's default while keeping in those nice extra features. That's how to press your button sorted. You'll be looking, of course, at the S tier space for your abilities and your buffs, and then at enemy nameplates for basically everything else, which keeps it nice and simple. But of course, the game is a little bit more than doing just that. Often, you also want to know what your enemies are doing so that you can handle it. Now, for trash mobs, this basically means enemy health, cast bars, positioning, and buffs. And for bosses, it means mostly the same, but also the added option of boss timers. And the good news is that almost all of this is already handled by nameplates. And that means that you can make decisions and interrupting or stunning like which mob to hit, basically all of that stuff pretty easily. But I did say almost. The game has came a long way with like callouts and mechanics being visually obvious, but the thing is, we still have got eight dungeons and eight raid bosses, which is quite a lot of stuff. Now you can do fine without add-ons, but even for heroic mode, people largely do want to take just the advantages where they can find them, which means boss mods like DPM and bigwigs. These will handle timers for like every relevant mechanic for you. They'll allow for the automatic marking of people for tactics, and they'll give you instructions either in the form of text or now with a quick voice quip. Now, 
I often find that their defaults are just way too aggressive and honestly a little overloading. So I'd recommend you turn off the full screen flashes and the audio alerts unless you need them. Now the timers usually take the form of bars all across your screen. What some people like to do is to move them off into the corner for reference. But more recently, some people have been using this weak or that turns it into a timeline. And this is a super like space efficient way of looking at this information. It's really easy to see and understand. So basically, get that weak aura on top of your boss mod and then just drop it in some of your A-tier space and you'll never miss a mechanic call out again. Then on top of boss mods, every season somebody, usually Cozzies, makes a massive weak aura pack for dungeons and raids. Now what these do is they will show you mechanics that will affect you and they'll just have a one word summary of what to do. And honestly, these tend to be huge and they're designed to basically go in the middle or the top of your screen. I'd say maybe move them into the B tier space and drop the size a little bit, but if you do struggle with just not really knowing what to do, these can be a really helpful pointer. And of course, once again, everything's linked down below, including DBM profiles. Now, if you want a personal recommendation, I would say to avoid using weak cores, not because they're bad, they're amazing and super powerful, but honestly, for most people, it's better to start off with nothing and then slowly add things on top until you get something that actually fits your needs. For a lot of people, they basically go, they Google top World of Warcraft add-ons, they install two dozen things, then they feel overwhelmed and they've got a big cluttery, messy UI that garbles up their brain. It's honestly like one of the number one noob traps in WoW, so definitely keep that in mind. World of Warcraft is an MMO though, not a single player game. Even if you're not a healer, there is still some amount of helping out other people. Almost every class in the game can do something to help the group, even if that's just a rogue throwing out an emergency blind to give the tank a little bit of breathing room. And that's why our party and raid frames are real important. Now, now some selfish DPS will just yeet these off into C tier space, but honestly, you shouldn't. I think you should maybe even have them in some A tier space, as long as they don't get in the way. But the point is, you get awareness of the rest of your team. That'll actually make you understand the dungeons and the raids and the delves so much more. And on top of that, if you need to help somebody out, your mouse will literally get there faster. Now, some healers even swap things around and they put their bars or their weak ores in C tier space and their frames in S tier space, just because as a healer, well, those frames are so important. Now, in terms of customization settings here, there's not much to do without getting into add-ons, but the raid style frames, I'd say, are way better than the party style ones. With that said then, let's talk about everything else. Honestly, if you've got those things sorted, the rest is a matter of preference. Some people like their mini-map at the bottom, others like their action bars, or if they don't need them, their action bars off to the side. Our UI, by design, is the most Blizz-like we could make it in its nature, so just pop open edit mode and move things around to your own taste. But just remember, the tier of information should match where you're putting it. Now, there are a bunch of extra add-ons that do fall under UI, but I'll dive into some of those in an in-depth add-on guide later. For now, I'm more focused on you having clear gameplay and easy decision making, and we've basically covered everything that's vital to that, except for one key ingredient to any good UI, the damage meter. Look, unironically, a DPS meter can help you make decisions. Maybe you're wondering, who do I PI as a priest? Who do I focus on as an Ogvoker? Who do I battle res? But we don't want details to show up and ruin our default friendly UI. And uh, that brings me to this. This is a crazy Blizzard style detail skin that is made just for this purpose. It's amazing. And big shout outs to Carl and Smoko for making this skin and the add-on to install it. Now, if this all looks a bit much to you, I've also got a basic details profile that uh, does look great with Blizzard defaults, but seriously, I would check out their profile if you want to put in just a little bit more work, but certainly get a great visual reward. So that's it. You're sorted. You can head up the links below, check out our guides. And of course, after this video, do go and watch the keybinding one. It'll help you out a lot. And a big thanks to the hundreds of members who have joined us over the last month. It's been absolutely awesome. And if you want more of that, go to Bellular Dot Games. Okay, see you over there.